Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about library. Now, most normies would probably ask, what is library? And when I first heard of it and then visited it, I thought that it was just a run-of-the-mill, open source maybe, but run-of-the-mill YouTube competitor. And I was like, eh, meh. I mean, there are like 10 dozen YouTube YouTube competitors out there, and most of them are atrocious or most of them I should say actually are unused <laughs> I mean like nobody goes to a YouTube competitor because they just go to YouTube and whether that's a good thing or not I mean is a question for another day but that's what I thought when I first heard of it I was like nobody's gonna go to this thing I mean it's just sure it's open source but it's just you know meh like I said but I wasn't understanding it properly and I've been on library.tv and Odyssey now for a couple weeks in terms of actually putting content on it. And I've done some research on it. So basically what library actually is, is a protocol, an open source protocol that allows developers to build applications on top of it and access the same content pool. So it allows, there's a, a, like a con like I said, there's a content pool that allows these apps to pull from it. So there's Odyssey and there's library.tv and there's probably some more other ones. And they're all open source and they allow you to go through and just view content like YouTube, but in different ways. So content creators can go through and put their videos up there like I do and like many others do for free, kind of like YouTube. And they can get tipped through uh, like a Bitcoin-like cryptocurrency. Or content creators can put their content up on these in the into the pool and then charge for it based on the view so it would cost a certain amount of this cryptocurrency based on the view so the cryptocurrency i'm talking about is, i think it's called lbc i haven't played around much with the cryptocurrency because it does i've never really gotten into that kind of thing they use cryptocurrency to monetize their videos and they also allow every creator to monetize their videos which is something that YouTube does not allow. You have to be at a certain point on YouTube in order to actually use Google AdSense or whatever. So, my two weeks with this have been fairly enlightening. Now, one thing I'll put this out there is that it's not as big or as well stocked with content as YouTube is. I mean, no site is. I mean, YouTube has like three or four days where the content uploaded every hour or something it's some insane statistic this is not that mostly what you'll find on this is open source enthusiasts and content that's not very well liked on youtube you also find some gems out there that people have just kind of decided to use this instead of youtube or use it alongside youtube but you're not going to find like the big names. You're not going to find, you know, I don't know, Linus Tech Tips. I don't think it's on uh, Library Odyssey, you know, or MKBHD. I don't think it's on there. So that's going to be the biggest problem for the library platform is that they don't have the big names yet. So that's I wasn't going to talk about what it would take to get them to be mainstream because, I mean, I think that's a pipe dream or whatever. But if they wanted to get bigger, they're going to have to get bigger names. And right now, they just don't have that kind of thing. So, I think the biggest thing that I've noticed watching content on there is that it's slow. And that's because of something to do with the transcoding that they, that they cannot do yet. Transcoding takes a lot of server power, and obviously that takes money, and they're so small. It's just the, a thing, and it's probably always going to be a thing. It's especially a problem when you upload the videos yourself because you're not getting any of the transcoding that YouTube does. When you sync your channel from YouTube to library, you're at least getting some of the transcoding that YouTube does. But if you upload it yourself, you get nothing. It's just straight resolution, whatever you upload it is. And that means that it's, it has to serve that huge file to everyone, even if they're watching on a lower resolution screen. So that's not... a great thing in terms of bandwidth and speed because you will notice that videos load slower on library and odyssey than they than they do on youtube it's just the way it is and 
I hope that they can go through and keep making that better. And I have noticed that it has gotten better in the last couple months or so since I've, since I've watched stuff on these platforms, but it's still not as good as YouTube. For content creators, the experience is okay. Now, I say okay because I would really like more analytics. Now, I, I understand they don't want to go through and put a whole bunch of trackers and stuff on their site. I completely understand that, and they'd probably turn a lot of people away from it if they did that. But I would like something more than just views. Because right now, all you get as a content creator is how many people have watched your video, how many people are subscribed to your channel. You don't get length of watch. You don't get, you know, any of the other analytics that like Google gives you. And like I said, I don't think that they need to go that far. They don't need to put all the JavaScript and stuff into their website that they need in order to track all that stuff. But even if you, they could just give you some more statistics on how long people watch the videos, that'd be great. And maybe it's there and I just haven't noticed it, but they're the channel analytics, I can actually show you this. So if I go up here to um, creator analytics, this is my channel, obviously. This is all the analytics you get. You get the number of followers, how many new you got this week, how many views, how many new this week, and the top video that you've had this week and all time. That's it. That's all the analytics you get. Now, alternatively, if you went to YouTube, I suppose I could show you this. If we go to YouTube Studio here and Analytics, you just get tons and tons of different stuff. And you don't get that with Library Odyssey. And like I said, I don't think that they need to go this far. They don't need all the, the JavaScript and web crap that you'd need in order to do this. A few extra things would be nice, especially if you're going to draw in people who need that kind of, you know, analytics and stuff to sell advertising stuff. Like I don't need that stuff, but I mean, the bigger names definitely would need it, right? They need more than just how many views something gets because, I mean, you get a lot of views on a video and most people, most people stop watching after two or three minutes and I'm still looking at the wrong camera like a dumbass. Uh, <laughs> Overall, it's just, I don't know, it's at least pretty enough. Now, this is Odyssey. This is a front end for the library you know, content pool. And it's okay. Like I said, it's not, I, I can see the whole multiple front ends to the library pool of content being very confusing to people because you can go to library, if I go to lbry.tv, I think I should be able to get to my website or my channel here. Yeah, it's the same thing, right? It's the exact same channel, just viewed through two different front ends. And that's going to be confusing. It's like there being four different YouTubes or whatever, and they're all viewing the same content. Which one do you go to? That could be a little confusing for drawing new people in because they're wondering, you know, is this the same Linux cast as the other Linux cast or, you know, Chances are they'll probably discover one and never even know the other one exists. But it could be confusing, you know, if they think that, like, oh, my God, there's another Linux cast dude out there stealing content from the main Linux cast dude or DistroTube or Brody Robinson or whatever. So it's just a thing. Whether or not, you know, it's a big deal, I don't know. So overall, my thoughts are mixed a little bit. I think it's a good idea, and I like that it's open source, and I like that it's e fairly easy to access for everybody, especially, I mean, every content creator can just get on there, and if you use Odyssey, at least, to be, the, be your front end, you can actually synchronize your YouTube channel, so everything that you upload on YouTube gets transferred over. Now, mine was not su a successful transfer. It only transferred over about 20 videos. And now it, uh, it does occasionally go through and actually upload the videos that I upload on YouTube, but not always. Like the one from yesterday, I had to go through and upload myself. So it's a, it's cool, but it's definitely not perfect. And I mean, it really, really wouldn't expect it to be. The, now, the monetization part of it is weird because, first of all, I'm not up to the, I'm, I'm not 
in the know on all the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency stuff. I'm just not into that kind of stuff. There's, I don't have any Bitcoin. It's woe is me, I guess. But at least with Bitcoin, you have a sense that it's worth something. So like, you know, that Bitcoin fluctuates a lot. Like right now it's a lot worth a lot of money, like real money with the cryptocurrency that library and odyssey and stuff like that uses i'm not sure what it's worth right and i don't even know how to go through and find out so it's one of those things that you know what are you going to do what do you do with it and they do have a cool system where you can go through and like invest in your own channel so you use the cryptocurrency that you've earned through tips and watching every day and uploading videos and stuff you can reinvest that into your channel, into your videos, and that gives them a boost up in the algorithm or whatever, I don't even know. It makes them more likely to be viewed, and theoretically at least, that would allow you to get more of the cryptocurrency because you get more viewers and stuff. So that's cool. I'm, I haven't got to the point where that's actually happened for me yet. Like I've only got like 30 views on a video, but I, you know, I haven't really been trying all that much either. So now... I always thought it was just going to be a, like a small thing. So it actually is not a very small thing. It's like So like Brody Robinson, Robertson, yeah, uh, he has more followers on the library platform than he does on YouTube. That's kind of crazy, right? Now, it's not that way for everybody. Like DistroTube and Luke Smith, they don't. They have a lot of followers on library and Odyssey, but they don't have as many as they do on YouTube. Okay, so those are my thoughts on library. Now, I think that it's going to be a good thing for open source channels and stuff. Whether or not it ever takes the next step is going to depend on whether or not they bring in some big names or not. I think it'd be a good idea right now while the whole cryptocurrency hype is going on to kind of do some marketing and bring some other people in because, you know, it's a fad and it'll eventually fade into the background again. Taking advantage of that is probably a good idea. So, anyways, thank you for watching. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons, Devon, Zach, Marcus, Merrick, and Camp. Thanks for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.